Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic and uh, last week we took Vera in a really interesting direction. We built Vera V2, uh, which is a brushless hammer. Uh, link to this video is in the description down below. But today we're going to take uh, the components that were in Vera version 1, because this is actually not the same electronics that were in Vera version 1, uh, and we're going to make a front hinge flipper, because I asked all of you out there what you wanted to see done with Vera, and the uh, top answer to that was build a front hinge flipper and also build a four-wheel drive version. So. I decided that we we're gonna do both of those things together and uh, we'll make a four wheel drive front hinge flipper version of Vera. And yeah, if you wanna be involved in like that type of thing, uh, obviously subscribe to the channel and keep an eye out for uh, community posts because that's where I'll throw up, every now and again I'll throw up little community posts asking you what you wanna see coming out of this channel. Uh, anyway, let's get straight on into this because I have parts printed and ready and we have a chat about how uh, Vera version 2 actually differs from this new four-wheel drive front hinge flipper, which I probably should have a name for by the end of this video. So here we go. These are the primary printed parts for this new uh, four-wheel drive front hinge flipper. And you can see a couple of main differences immediately here. First of all, uh, this print is actually, well, that's not really a full part of the chassis. That's actually a motor mount, which kind of tucks on in here, but we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, yeah, so we've got a motor mount, but we've got a two-part chassis as opposed to a one-part chassis. And this is so that we have uh, a front wedge that actually extends below the lip of the print, and also a front wedge that is a little bit more impact resistant because it's gonna be taking those hits, uh, not running down a print line, which will make it a whole lot stronger. And we're gonna obviously acetone weld this in place, but you can also see it drops down off the actual main chassis by kind of a millimeter, two millimeters, and that's just enough for the size of the wheel that we're going to use to, um, yeah, keep this whole thing close to the ground and scrapey wedge up through there. Because obviously, uh, we're doing a front hinge flipper. The idea is that the flipper is gonna sit kind of along the back this way and then flick all the way forwards out through a little slit in the front of the wedge, uh, hopefully grabbing people and uh, tossing them away. So. That's the main difference. Then we've got uh, our motor mounts as per usual, and then uh, extra holes in the side here, which I haven't cleaned the support material out of yet, but one of these is gonna be holding an intermediate gear, and then the other one of them is going to be holding the actual front wheel. So there's an intermediate gear, which literally just makes sure that I can drive two uh, gears from the same thing. I had thought about doing some kind of um, O-ring, style system, but what that would mean is that the front wheels would only have the same amount of traction as that O-ring, because it was the O-ring that's giving them the traction in the first place. Uh, and any more traction that they'd need would just cause the O-ring to slip. So uh, I figured that gears were gonna be the most uh, effective way of allowing a ton of torque to be pushed through those front wheels. Uh, so I'll also say too, that uh, this little guy here is a very different motor mount than what I normally use. I normally use ones that are a full U shape. This guy is actually designed so that it locks into the base chassis down in there, but then it also locks into the front wedge. So there's a couple of holes in the front wedge, uh, which means I can hopefully, and I, first test for this, please fit. Uh, I might need to sand some pieces here. But yeah, so there we go, actually it does fit, yeah. So it sits in there and it should lock the motor in place by locking into the front panel, which will be an interesting way to do this. All right, so here we go, a ton of extra parts here. And the big thing that I'm gonna show you is these wheels. The gear set is interesting but uh, flawed at the moment because uh, these parts didn't come out quite what I, the way I needed them to. For example, this is supposed to spin fairly freely. This is one of the idler gears at the front, which will have a wheel on it, but you can see I actually need to screw the thread in to get this to work. I can't just push that through. Uh, so that's not great. So I need to reprint all of these. I think I've got my tolerance set up wrong for ABS printing, because these are ABS gears at the moment. Um, and then I have the front flipper as well. So you can see it's quite a long flipper. It kind of nestles into the back here and will flip all the way forwards to about there. So we've got a lot of flip going on, 
which should be quite good. I, I might reprint this maybe later with a bigger panel on it too to give a bit more push with it, but uh, for the moment it does actually end up reprint because the N20 um, housing in this doesn't fit either. So yeah, I think I've just I've messed up something on my printer and I've got all of my dimensions just a little bit wrong. And I've also got other idling gears and stuff, but all of that, not quite right. The big thing though is these. These are the largest wheels I've ever put to ant weights, I think. Because uh, these here are 12 mil wheels, these are 20 mil wheels. So we have a ton of extra grip. They are smaller in radius uh, and they'll have a silicon outer on them eventually, but I need to go buy some more silicon. Lots of stuff that needs to be redone at the moment. Um, yeah, so they have a smaller radius on them, but they have they are much, much thicker, which means that at the end of the day, we're going to have a ton more grip on the ground. By the time I've got all four of these things running on this robot, this is gonna have so much grip. It's gonna be amazing. Possibly the most pushy robot I've ever put uh, into the arena. So, boom, we have wheels. But I will say, these things fought me. Uh, every step of the way in the demolding process. Now, which one is it? It's really bad. So this thing here got really chewed up trying to get it out of the molds. And in actual fact, what ended up happening was I had to break the molds to get these out because there was just too much surface area in here for these to actually, um, yeah, to come out nice and neatly. So I ended up having to break the bottoms off all of my molds to get more leverage to push all of these wheels out, which was a bit of a pain. And uh, yeah, reminds me why at one point in the past, I made a uh, three part mold so that these could open up sideways. And I think we'll be going to back to that in the future because this was a real pain, but we now have four wheels. Uh, so the chassis itself is uh, out at the moment drying with an acetone weld. And once that's done, we will get this thing all put together and hopefully it'll be real good. worked really, really well. I am quite happy with that. 
Uh, the only thing I might do between now and the actual event, which is not too far away at this point, is to change uh, the flipper arm. The D-shaft that I printed or the D-shaft connector I printed in the arm, it's just a little bit loose at the moment. It's got a little bit of play in it before it actually engages the arm and that's not gonna hold up too well in combat. So I'll just rejig that. I also might put a different motor in here. At the moment, it's got a 50 to one gear motor in here. And if I swap that over for like 100 to one, then it's gonna have a lot more force to be pushing people up and away and stacking them against walls, which would be really, really cool. So really happy with the way that's working. And I just, I had to try something. So I needed to know how much torque I'm, or how much traction I'm getting out of the four wheel drive wide wheel system. So I turned on both this and Vera version two that we built last week. Uh, at the same time, they're both controlled by the same transmitter. So by starting them facing each other and pushing forwards, we got a shoving match. And that happened every time. There was two or three that I had uh, set up off camera because I thought it was on camera and in actual fact I hadn't started the camera, but I'd shoved, uh, done that shoving match a couple of times before realizing that I'd not started the camera. And yeah, the, the new four wheel drive flipper beat Vera every single time. It was just amazing. I mean, I think part of that is down to the fact that Vera has an acetate wedge down the front that does help, uh, sorry, not Vera, the four wheel drive has an acetate wedge down the front and Vera does not, uh, meaning that the four wheel drive is able to get in underneath Vera quite easily and change the weight distribution because weight distribution is a big thing with these robots in terms of how much weight is sitting over the wheels uh, it does affect how much traction you get but then also your surface area which this thing has in spades uh, does also affect how well you drive. So in this case, it looks like the surface area is definitely the thing winning out. Anyway, that's gonna be it for this video. I hope you guys have enjoyed this one and I will see you in the next video. <laughs>